Hey guys, uh, so I'll be talking about customer empathy and you know get into how to build the uh, you know right kind of products. Uh, I'll break the session into three parts. One would be I'll be talking about in general what is product management and, and uh, you know how do we build products, how do we practice product management in our professional careers. The second would be the topic itself. What exactly do we mean by customer empathy and uh, why is it so important and is a very underrated thing in the industry? And the third would be I would taking questions um, and will be very happy to answer a lot of your questions. Uh, so uh, I graduated from IIT Kanpur in 2015. Um, I have worked in a couple of startups uh, uh, when I when I was in my college, and after that I have been working as a product manager. Uh, at a couple of companies, one was Aspiring Minds and the second was Harwale. Uh, at the two startups which you can see at the top, so I've been involved from the very scratch, even the, uh, I have conceptualized the logo and everything, built a business around it, and then I moved on to uh, Aspiring Minds where I worked for one year, and then uh, I was working at Carwale for uh, more than 18 months. So uh, before we get into product management, I just wanted to, you know, uh, walk you guys through what is a typical day in PM's life so that you get a flavor of, you know, uh, what exactly is the work of a PM. So let's say if I get to office by 10 o'clock, then I'll go through my emails, look at the key metric. So more, uh, most of the product owners, you know, generally uh, own some or the other metrics. So they generally look at the metrics at the very uh, start of the day. Then you clear all your pending reviews the design reviews, there can be multiple UATs. UATs refers to, uh, there will be few tasks which you wanted to test before it goes on live. You also participate in the daily scrum standups. So you do that. And then you start working on your back alignment. So start preparing for the you know, tasks for the next sprint. As in, what do you want to, what all features do you want to develop in the next sprint? And uh, then, the next thing you want to do is what uh, check the performance of the feature shipped in the last sprint. So uh, most of the companies follow a two week sprint, uh, 15 days scrum, wherever the agile methodology is. Uh, so the PO is you know responsible for checking the performance of the features which was shipped last sprint. And uh, next thing, uh, so every product manager has to you know keep on working the product roadmap. Uh, where you want to you know plan for the next three months three to six months roadmap so you work on that as well then you largely catch up with other sales customer guys and marketing guys to you know get a flavor what is going on in their life and how can you uh, if you can get some kind of feedback from them which you can implement uh, or improvise in your product and largely some ad hoc tasks at the end of the day and then you go back to your home so that's like uh, you know uh, this is something which i want to start with uh, in the next slide, I'll you know talk about couple of Venn diagrams which are very popular in the industry of product management. Uh, the first one, a lot of you would have seen this uh, that you know the center point is something which where uh, no, uh, you know an ideal product manager wants to land in. So it's an intersection of technology, business, and design. So you think about something that it must have some business value. You design it, you get it developed, and you ship it. Uh, the next Venn diagram, which is not very popular, uh, but uh, I wanted to talk more about it is how, what is an ingredient of a product? So a product must, you know, uh, always check these three things. The first would be desirability. It must be desired in the market. It must be viable and it should also be very feasible. So this center point would be, you know, the case for an ideal product. So in this entire presentation, I'll be focusing more on the uh, how to build products rather than going into detail as how do you become a product manager. So let's say you crack the desirability, viability and feasibility framework. So I would say whenever you think about something which is desired in the market, you look at the viability and you also understand the feasibility. So you know what to build. So let's say you know that there is a need of something like uh, cab people look for you know cab hailing services you also understand that you can make a business out of it and you know that there are tech solutions which are available from which you can build you know a product uh, which can be a, something like a cab hailing services and which can provide cabs at the tap of a button so you know what to build now the next thing is from knowing what to build to some product something like uber ola or didi 
how do you build that and to me you know the the link between both of them how do you link it uh, the both of them what to build and what exactly is the final product is user empathy or you may say customer empathy uh, so i'll just briefly you know walk you guys through what exactly is empathy so empathy according to its literal meaning the ability to understand and share the feeling of others and i have always felt that empathy and customer empathy is something uh, which is very underrated in the industry we do not talk a lot about it we talk a lot about data we talk a lot about data driven products but this is something which we do not talk a lot about and why you should talk about empathy is because you know we all are very different we behave very differently because of our social economic and cultural reasons data can help us you know build hypothesis it can test you uh, it can help you test the hypothesis but you can build intuition only by empathizing with your users and the third thing is there is no way a product can evolve you know without understanding the behavioral aspect of its user building user persona will take a lot of time <laughs> to be very honest right and that can be said of its own uh, but i think if you have an example about what a end product of a user person exercise looks like if you have it handy it will be great otherwise uh, i can i can just take a couple of minutes and i can explain right away sure sure so we discussed about empathy and why is it so important uh, the way we behave you know and data cannot tell you everything so you need to talk to your users you need to empathize with your users you need to understand a lot of behavioral aspect of your users so uh, you know uh, last night i had a couple of discussion with my friends and i tried and you know draw some kind of analogy between cook and a product manager so let's say a cook knows what to build a cook knows that i have to you know cook rotis today but it is very important for the cook to understand whom is he preparing the roti for right uh, so let's say if he is in south india the kind of you know chapati he will prepare will be very different from somebody who prepares chapati for north indians it is very un- important to understand the taste of the user who will who is going to have the food on the similar lines it is very important for a product manager to understand whom is he you know building the product for who is the audience it is very important for him to understand the you know emotion the taste uh, the goal the expectation of the end user so for customer empathy you know uh, two things which we need to understand the first thing is how do you identify your customers and the second is understanding their behavior so identifying your users you know uh, can happen in two uh, different steps the first would be you ask couple of questions that you know who need your product and who understand its proposition and the second thing would be who is unhappy with similar products in the market and needs an alternative so you'll get some sense of the larger pool of your you know audience now once you get let's say you understand that you know these many these many millions are my users how do you you know uh, how do you build personas based on the u- your users so that you can b- start building products around it because you cannot build product for 2 million people right you have to build for certain set of personas so let's start from you know understanding your users to building user persona first thing which we generally do in our product management practices you conduct user research then you try and condense the research and classify so what you do is you you know find some uh, similar things similar attributes and you classify your multiple users in different uh, buckets once you have classified them into different buckets you try and refine the personas and create three to five personas so the idea is to have you know a certain amount of persona uh, something like seven five to seven personas and uh, based on the personas you will start building the product the third would be the personas should be very much realistic so let's say if we are building you know something like e-commerce for two wheelers platform then we conduct the user research we try and you know understand that the users uh, so people in 18 to 24 who are looking for a bike they are users right but you try and uh, so there could be a guy who is from delhi who will be very differently from a guy who lives in bangalore there is a guy who you know wants to buy a bike for office purposes will behave very differently from a guy who is looking to buy a bike for his family so try and classify all sets of users into certain amount of finite number of personas 
so that it is very easy for a product manager to understand these personas and build products around it. Uh, is it clear to you guys? Uh, do you want me to get into uh, more into how do you build user personas? So basically, guys, a uh, user persona is a is, is a fictional it's a fictional uh, entity or artifact that you create. Uh, remember the keyword. It's fictional artifact that you create uh, to to you know kind of pinpoint your audience. Let me let me help you understand this a little better. So try to recall your last movie that you watched okay the hero the actor the actresses are essentially fictional characters unless you're watching sanju <laughs> uh, but for all the other movies uh, the actor or the actress the hero hero and protagonist would be the fictional character and he has a certain backstory he has a certain uh, you know characteristics he has certain behavior certain hobby he's a flamboyant or he's a uh, shy, nervous, city boy, or something like that, right? So that is essentially uh, the kind of caricature, the kind of uh, artifact that you create uh, as a user persona. And you do that because you want to ensure that your developer, your designer, your business, your stakeholders, your everybody who's going to interact uh, with the product knows who they are building it for. Right. Okay. It's very, very important because see the user research that goes behind designing these user personas will be done by you largely. Okay. By you and maybe by the U UX person, maybe, uh, okay. but you'll be doing it. Right. And so you are the only one who has actually gone out in the field, interviewed a lot of people, uh, questioned them and then finally did the synthesis as to, okay, my audience lies between the age group of 25 to 30 or 30 years. They're all bachelors. They're all males. Uh, they all live in urban cities and they typically like a lot of uh, beer, for example. Right, So that becomes the core persona that you are trying to target. Now, this is the research that you did, but the developer didn't do it. The business stakeholders didn't do it. And that's why it becomes very difficult for them to actually imagine who they are building it for. And so when you create a proper persona, which has a face to it, which has a name to it, which has an age to it, it becomes very, very easy to actually relate to it. Okay, let me let me share a couple of examples which uh, Google threw. Uh, sharing this image in the chat and uh, just have a look at your own leisure. Uh, this should give you a good idea about, about it. And you will notice that it almost looks like this person is real. That this Jack Rowler is a real person who lives in uh, Los Angeles and everything is, and he's real person, but he is not. Okay. He's not. He is essentially a abstraction of all the research that the person did or the use the product manager did, abstraction of a certain audience. And a representative of that audience. He's not a stereotype. Okay. He is not a stereotype. He's a representative of the common audience or a segment of audience that you are working for. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Abhishek, you can take over from here. Sure. Uh, just to you know add to Talvinder's point while we are creating user personas it is very important to understand that we are not looking at one variable so for example a female and a male can be you know into one user personas because they behave in a very similar manner so just to you know clear that out that although uh, you know as talvinder mentioned that it has to be an artifact and the, your developers and the other stakeholders should be able to relate to it but while we are conducting user research we should be very sure that we are you know focusing on the end result means their behavior should be very similar and that is why they are classified into one user persona taking this discussion ahead you know how what are the practices which we do you know to understand our users so it can be one to one interview it can be a fake focus group research it can be surveys online as well as offline and it can be internal stakeholders feedback so let's say you know by all these uh, you know methods like one to one interview or focus group or surveys or internal stakeholder feedback we want to collect you know data around what is their culture what is their behavior what are their, the emotions of the you know users what are the constraints what is their what is the you know, final goal of the user so let's say you know as i mentioned that we have to uh, do some one to one interview or you have to do survey so what should be our you know, goal what should we know about the user right so the first would be the user demographics. Uh, 
it can contain multiple dimensions we should be able to understand where the person lives what is it, if the person lives in a rented house that also comes into user demography so you know you try and understand a lot about user uh, the second would be the user behavior how do the user behave uh, in let's say multiple situations so for example uh, let's take an example of uber so while let's say you know while the uber must be launched in us their user demographics would be very different right when it comes to india when uber launches products in india it would be very different so the a pm at you, you know uber will try and uh, redefine the user demographics based on people who are using who are you know going to use uber in india their user behavior their emotions uh, the way they behave they means a lot of things can get into user behavior uh, like how do you use an internet app uh, how much are people well versed with internet so you need to look at all those parameters then you look at what is the goal of the user so for example we might uh, in us people might take uh, you know uber rides for small distances but in india there can be autos there can be rickshaws with which people might take so the goal the, you know the pm has to understand the user's goal uh, what the, is the user looking for from this product the, the you know the final would be what are the user challenges so there would be some constraints while the user is using your product so we also need to understand the challenges behind you know uh, the user might be facing or what are the constraints right so if you ask all these questions you try and you know uh, you'll get some sense of the you'll get a lot of information from the user you'll get to understand the demographics their behavior and their challenges so you can build a questionnaire so you know just wanted to walk you guys through uh, the importance of user empathy from a real life example so let's say if we had to build you know e-commerce platform for a bike and a mobile phone so how would we go about you know solving both the problems so although we understand that we have to build an e-commerce platform for two products uh, but the nature in which we will approach the problem would be very different and this whole reason for this would be our users how do they behave very differently so i'll just list down what are the differences what are the key differences between the users the one would be let's say the average ticket size of a bike would be somewhere around 60k the average ticket size of the phone would be somewhere around 15k the majority of you know the users will be from rural india and for mobile it would be urban or semi urban india uh, the users would be using very low end devices and while you know because somebody uh, if you consider the majority of the bikes uh, which are around 60k urban bikes and uh, the you know sports bikes i'm talking about like the likes of splendor glamour or the hero and honda bikes so the devices uh, you know people will use low end devices because they are in rural areas they will have poor internet connection they will also have low penetration of internet banking but while with mobile people will use you know high end devices they will have good internet connection they will have high penetration of internet banking so while we are building you know e commerce for both the platforms how do we approach the problem so let's say you know uh, i was talking about the user behavior so let's say i build a platform uh, you know so while i'm building a platform for e-commerce for sports uh, for bikes i need to take care of the users that it should the platform should run in a low end devices the memory of a low end device would be very different from something like a samsung high end device phone so if we are building an app for let's say an e-commerce of bikes we need to take care about the memory of the phone right memory of the phone of the end user right so you know uh, just wanted to bring in that uh, you know the importance of user user behavior their you know goals and challenges because it is very important for us to keep you know these four things in mind before we have started building the product i'll just answer the question that was asked how do you approach persona ah uh, it's a i mean it's a very standard actually the approach is very very standard which is you do some research and you do that research in multiple ways depending on what kind of uh, uh, what kind of i mean what kind of audience you're talking about uh, 
uh, the research can be on the field that is you're going on the field you're going to research you're going to uh, you know for example you want to test out the latest and greatest dating app that you have there's a good likelihood that uh, customers that you're approaching or the users that you are expecting are are the ones who are sitting in starbucks drinking coffee or or folks who are uh, who you can find out uh, outside of a nightclub uh, in which case it makes sense for you to actually stand out of a nightclub stand out of uh, stand at a starbucks and ask people questions around it so that is how you can actually uh, so there is one approach the second approach is if it's a very large level of research that you want to do across a lot of people then you can actually run online surveys and online questionnaires that's second approach the third approach is where you can uh, look at the past data and if you have a very rich like if you are a large enough company uh, and you have a lot of data about your users you can actually do you can do segment slice and dice the data to find out uh, which segment is using what kind of uh, features what kind of products what kind of uh, and and so on you can do a lot of data based research uh, when you do all of this it's very important uh, the only cardinal rule i mean i can go deeper than this but i think this should give you a good perspective the the biggest or the most i will say the golden rule when you're doing any of these three things is uh, make sure that you're that you're focusing on the behavior okay how these people are behaving and not what they're saying what people say versus what they do is very very different okay people like to say a lot of awesome things about themselves and about what they would like to do but they end up doing something completely different okay uh, so very important with all these surveys all this observations that you're doing this observation should be based on their behavior and not on what they're saying okay uh, i'm not sure if abhishek has joined uh, abhishek are you there yeah 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 just okay <laughs> awesome okay yeah please continue Okay, uh, so you know, uh, just to end this entire conversation of user empathy, one thing which I feel is very important is the user as well as their behavior evolve with time and we need to keep in touch with the user. So it's not about, you know, doing all the exercise, doing all the surveys, one to one discussion and focus group research. It's not that you have done it once and you are done forever. It's an ongoing process. So user evolve, your, the behavior of the user changes. So in a similar manner, your product could only evolve when you evolve with your user. So by this, you know, uh, with this, I would like to end this entire uh, conversation around user empathy. And thanks a lot. Thank you so much. I think you've got a, a strong focus on customer empathy and uh, user empathy, something that people don't do very often. Um, and glad because nowadays it's, the buzzword is uh, data-driven data. products and data-driven products. But right. when you're doing data-driven products, a lot of times you just end up uh, not observing what people, uh, not realizing what people really want. And you right. end up building the wrong stuff. Uh, so right. uh, telling them what we can do right now is because a lot of people are you know, planning to get into product management. We can take a few questions from them. Uh, yep. It can it can range from anything from how do you join how do you become a product manager how do you start a career in product management to anything related to data driven products or the topic we discussed today. Yep. Uh, yeah. So go ahead, guys. Amrit has a question. If you join a new company, what steps should be taken to understand the current user because you might come across edge cases first. Okay. Uh, do you want to take this, Abhishek? Sure. Uh, you know, I'll give you my what I feel about the, the entire. You know, um, how how should you go about understanding the user whenever you join a new company? Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever we join a new company, the first thing which we do is you know which we are asked to do is explore their product, and we have our own biases, we have our own you know prejudices. We come with a lot of you know uh, because we are joining company, we think something about the product. So the first the first thing which you you know get to know is your own bias, uh, which you should be, uh, which you know, which you should, you should understand that you shouldn't start working with your own bias. The first thing which I'll do is I'll try and you know take 
and read some of the documents which the existing product managers would be having some kind of user persona research some kind of surveys some kind of you know uh, you might also want to get into uh, data for example what is the you know demographic look like what is the you know may, uh, the, uh, how does the gender ratio look like uh, where does the people come from uh, who are the users uh, how much uh, is the retention and stuff so so let me look, let me put it this way so there could be two things one would be the qualitative side and the other would be the quantitative side so you can always you know reach out to other pms to understand if they have some existing surveys if they don't have i think you should fall back on uh, you know the secondary research you can you know look at uh, if there is some white paper published uh, your own market uh, you know, something of that sort the other would be how do your user behave how much your uh, what is the let's say nps of the uh, your product so something of that sort and based on that you try and get some sense of what does your user base look like and then i think then you are in a good step to you know start some kind of user research based on uh, the insight you have gathered from both these things i think talvinder you can add more to it uh, sure i think uh, uh, abhishek what you said is precisely right i think the first and foremost thing is when you join a new company uh, typically you know being product managers we have the urge of being very you know immediately taking action so control that urge a little bit and make sure that you are acting out of the uh, uh, acting after you know about the users pr properly uh, don't immediately act on you know, make the changes i understand the user it will take you at least couple of sprints uh, to really understand how the users are behaving okay uh, so don't immediately sprint into action and uh, try to make major changes don't do that uh number one number two i'm sure depending on which company you join if it's a startup typically they will not have any data or they will not have any user research that they would have done in the past uh so that will be tricky but if you're joining a large company you, they will have some user data make sure that you're collecting a lot of these number three always and always spend at least two to five days at the customer care taking calls or replying to the emails super critical especially when you're joining fresh do that and you will thank me someday <laughs> because the amount of insight that you'll get from the customer care team and by addressing if you cannot like if the team doesn't allow you to take the calls immediately because even you don't know the answers to everything uh, in that case just shadow a customer care executive just shadow it okay savere se baith gaye raat ko uthe savere baith gaye raat ko uthe make sure that you do that uh, you know from morning till night at least for two days to five days depending on you know what kind of company you're talking about uh and that will give you solid solid insight into what's really happening everything else will be hearsay everything else will be hearsay everything will be else will be a derived information that you'll be getting but what you'll get from the customer care team and by sitting on the desk uh that will be irreplaceable okay so i think this is the couple of a uh, couple of things that i will suggest that you should do uh very joining a new company uh i can go on but i think there are a few other questions uh amrit i hope this answers if not please feel free to reach out to me or abhishek okay um uh, can you give an example as to how customer user empathy led, led to a new feature or evolution of existing feature in car wale abhishek what do you think can you give an example sure so uh one thing if you look at you know almost all the portals of cars in india largely they have data around uh, the, their specification their on road price uh, their images their videos their reviews uh, the expert reviews but and that the same amount of data you can find on the manufacturer's own website right so uh, we tried and you know conducted some survey and we asked this question to the users online that what brings you to car wale mm -hmm. and so a lot of them you know told that because obviously this was very you know uh, obvious that a lot of people will come and check the price they'll want to buy uh, you know car and they might drop you a lead and they get in contact with the uh, dealers 
so we had this question that do users want you know reviews around it the second question was the user review the customer review the second question was who will write these customer reviews because somebody who already owns a car why will he come to our platform mm -hmm. right so we started you know digging deeper into this problem that what will users write reviews and are users interested in reading reviews so we okay. conducted a lot, we conducted a lot of surveys and you know as the legacy says that if you have worked on a product for more than let's say six seven eight years you kind of developed your own biases mm -hmm. so it was you know a common phenomena it was a common understanding of almost all the product guys that people who already let's say own a car and who will write a review they don't come to us because people who are you know planning to buy a car they will come to our platform they will check price they will buy a car they will drop a lit and they will leave so while we are running this survey we figured out that you know if even if people own a car they come to our platform to look at their specification they come to our platform to understand lot of things that for example if we own some device something like alexa then also it is our you know inquisitiveness to go to uh, platform uh, to amazon and check what are the specification if enough to buying it we so we you know uh, established that 14% of the total users already own a car who come to our platform they are not coming to buy a, anything okay so that That's gave us, yeah so that given starting point as you know uh, we can build something around reviews and Got today it. you know uh, today what uh, what differentiate carwale from other you know uh, automotive portals is it uh, you can find lot of quality reviews on carwale and platform uh, you won't be able to find you know on other platform we really focused on it uh, once we understood that you know user are looking for reviews and you, there are users who can write reviews so that was something uh, which was uh, which worked really well for us perfect perfect sounds yeah that, that definitely seems very valuable because uh, like i am also i also own a car but uh, uh, i frequently go to carwale or to car tech for other sites largely right. to you know because being a car enthusiast i will definitely like right. to you know, just be aware right. of what's happening right, i don't right, right. i'm not going to do car shopping every month but i would like to right. see what's right. coming up right so rohit raises a very good question or a very uh, good point that your qualitative data provides a lot of insights uh, which will help you creating in hypothesis and you can use then the quantitative data to essentially validate or invalidate uh, invalid them that's that's precisely how it should be done but a lot of times qualitative data is very difficult to uh, get quantitative data is much more easy to get uh, relatively right and uh, uh, and that's why you know data driven product is the buzzword <laughs> because it's much easier to you know get the data and crank up something because yeah the data the data talk the data spoke the data said 10% 20% 50% so we built it out but it isn't working so that happens uh, but qualitative data is very difficult to get i agree uh, completely agree and that is why i think uh, you know qualitative uh, analysis is one of the most underrated thing and underperformed thing in the industry correct and and uh, the other thing is you know uh, with the data uh, it also helps people save their assets that you know right if, right if something goes wrong then you can simply tell the manager see look at this excel sheet this is the numbers that we got right uh, so we built it out <laughs> right. uh, but nobody wants to actually go out on the field to a qualitative survey and you know because that is boring that is men right um, that's right. a lot of effort right right uh, i'll just i'll just give you uh, you know one analogy from my experience here so i was also working uh, i was working on the you know e-commerce platform for bikes uh, which is a separate business unit at carwale so you know what we figured out that so let's say i'll give you uh, you know a perspective that there is the section of specification bike specification so you can always measure how much uh, amount of time you know you just spend on that section and uh, you can always have a metric around the consumption that these many million minutes were spent on specification right but when you go out and ask the user do they really understand displacement because you know the user who is own, uh, you know planning to buy a splendor bike uh, worth 60000 they don't have any idea about what displacement exactly is what is torque 
they don't know right but you can show it through the data that you know uh, these many minutes are being spent on the specification right so there could be two things either people are not able to you know make anything out of that specification section and then they are spending time so till the time you do not go out in the market and try and understand are people getting what is written there you won't be able to understand it ever correct and if you i mean it's a very classic example very popular example when ipod was launched roughly 15 years back it wasn't uh, it has 50 gb of data or it has this many data that many data it was very simple thousand songs in your pocket which becomes the most easy to consume message right and that also becomes a very interesting and very simple specification to give to your developers or to the product designer or product builder or whoever that is that yeah right. the consumers are looking for about 1000 songs because that number is large enough that's almost like having 100 cds in your pocket which is right. large enough to survive a trekking or a hill or a, you know outdoor activity which is the kind of which is the kind of activities that most of the people do in us where which was a primary market for them um so shubham has another question what are the good resources for learning whole product management okay i think you uh, can answer it but... <laughs> okay so there are a lot of resources both free as well as paid i'll talk about free ones first um see first of all uh, understand that uh, any subject matter any discipline um uh, like for example instead of you talking about product management i'll just say physics for example now uh, learning physics for example is a lifelong journey okay uh, and as you progress you go from novice to beginner to intermediate to expert to advanced expert to phd to hyper phd to to a crazy scientist right whatever uh, so that is the journey you take so it's a lifelong journey now uh, you will get a lot of free content some of uh, which will help you start your journey into the dip, into the world of physics to help you understand uh, you can buy some books and uh, that will also kick off the journey where you can start comprehending things uh, which will take you to the first stage to the second stage uh, and so on and as you can imagine as you move further in this learning it will get more and more difficult and getting quality data quality content will get more and more difficult uh, so the starting point should be i will suggest a uh, search on youtube look for uh, some videos from you know y combinator or from uh, uh, you know yeah so y combinator typically has a lot of good quality uh, content you can search from there uh, so we at pragmatic leaders have also i mean these kind of webinars are all meant to actually help people get started with product management come know about the uh, the value of product management and uh, how it how it can become the true differentiator for uh, uh, for the future uh, products that are getting built because you know see 5 years back it used to be typically startups used to just hire a developer not even a designer because at that time having an app itself was a differentiator however ugly it used to be later on people started realizing that yeah it is becoming much more easier to build a product or get a get a app or website kicked off but uh, uh people are people are preferring well designed sites than just well engineered sites and that's when designers became first hires right because that became the differentiator and now the design as well as engineering has become kind of commoditized anybody can actually cook up an app or a website in a in a week's time now it's very simple and that is when people are realizing that product management actually is needed because you need to really come up with the right thing and you need to build the right stuff because engineering and design has become much simplified come relatively easier to do uh, and not a differentiator not a big differentiator anymore right um, so with that in mind you will get a lot of content to start off and to get to a beginner level uh going further getting deeper you'll find less and less quality content you will find a lot of noise you will find the same content over and over again medium churns out uh, on medium you can find a lot of content but then again you will see not start with medium because uh, on medium you will find a lot of noise and unless until you have good context in your place uh good context about things it will become very difficult to actually understand things uh right 
So start with YouTube, look for Y Combinator videos. That should be the good starting point. Apart from that, there are paid courses available. One is uh, by us. Um, you can check out the site or you can reach out to me separately and I can, I can talk about that. Um, and it's a lifelong journey, just remember that, okay? It's a lifelong journey. So start very simple, what is product? What is product management? What is user persona? Just start with that. Then get into design, get into technology, uh, get into innovation. You, know. uh, you can, in fact, you can do one more thing, a uh, simpler thing, which is uh, just download the syllabus from uh, from track and take it to your site. And that should be a good idea of the topics or the content that you should be reading up. And then you can, uh, you know, look up those picks in that sequence. Uh, you should be able to find a lot of free content for that also. Or if you so wish, you can always join our course. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, so if you're making a product for the future, uh, so you're never making product for the future. You're using, uh, I mean, you're always building product for the for the present for today. Right, uh, and what he's saying, which is uh, for the future, essentially, is it's a new age technology. Okay, uh, so there's something called uh, technology readiness index, which is used by, which is proposed and uh, la popularized by NASA. Uh, so there are a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, uh, new technologies that keep coming up, and uh, the question is, how ready are they? Are they ready for uh, simple, cute experiments, or are they are ready for full-fledged production uh, apps? In which case, I think the fundamentals still remain the same. Uh, product management is product management. Okay, uh, the fundamentals remain exactly the same, except uh, because we're talking about cutting edge or uh, uh, cutting edge technology. A lot of a lot of things are not very well tested. Right, a lot of the things are not very well tested. You do not have a lot of data, so that's why it becomes very, very important uh, to one make sure that your user persona and user research is solid. Number one, number two, you are not you are uh, not overestimating the uh, you are not overestimating the power or the impact of the technology, and you are consistently validating or invalidating your hypothesis on your con on the technology that will will it work, will it not work, and so on. Right. So data of present products and solutions, I will not say date. I mean, you can always use analogies, but uh, uh, in cutting edge stuff, it uh, usually the consumers or the users would be innovators, the, the very beginners, the people who like thrive and enjoy using the latest and greatest. Right. So they have a completely different psych psychology. So knowing that psychology and making sure that you are tapping into them and uh, making them feel good will also help. Right. So it essentially, it doesn't matter. Like, in the, in, to be very honest, uh, in the big grander scheme of things, it doesn't matter too much whether you're building technology. Uh, I mean, whether you you're building a, 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 a product using WordPress and PHP, the oldest technology possible uh, right now, or you're building a next greatest blockchain app. Fundamentals remain precisely the same, except you'll be applying different concepts. That's it. So. Pius is trying to ask that, you know, if you are building a new product, then what can be the approach to understand a persona which will use the product in the future? Okay. Uh, so let me think of an example. So let, let's think something like Hotstar. Okay. So while we are, while, you know, if I were a PM at, you know, um, Hotstar, I would be building uh, Hotstar keeping in mind that people from 18 to 24 or people who already have access to mobile and internet will be using our product, right? But in times to come, we can realize that in let's say like a couple of years, these uh, this Hotstar would be being used by you know kids as well, right? So I think the you know, best way to approach this problem is to uh, to understand the trend. Because I don't think you can generate a lot of data around it, or you can do a lot of, uh, you know, user research. Because we are not sure uh, about the, you know, the upcoming persona. But what we can surely understand is uh, if you get some sense of, you know, uh, the trends. Abhishek, can I just jump in? Sure, 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 sure. 
because i think so one fundamental thing you wish uh, when you said if you are creating a new product then is there any approach to understand the persona which will use that product in future uh, i think you have it exactly ulta you have exact like it should be the other way around okay you you spotted an opportunity saw an opportunity whether it was a market gap or it was a geographical gap it was a demographic gap you spotted an opportunity once you spotted that you decided to work towards it and build a product around it okay now when you're building a product around it a fundamental thing is you need to first of all identify who is going to pay for this or who is going to choose this okay so you need to first understand the persona and then you start creating the product around it not the other way around that i'm creating a product and i want to identify the persona no you are you have you have identified the persona now you're building a product Okay, that's the right approach. That's the right direction. This can this can delay the thrill of uh, building and coding and launching a product a little bit. But trust me, uh, that thrill is short-lived if you have not identified your persona properly. And uh, the depression that follows after that that it, we put in so much of effort and but nobody's using it, it's pretty bad. So and I mean life is too short to build products which nobody needs, right? So, uh, so you start think, by identifying the persona and then build the product. I think he, uh, Pius, correct me uh, if I am uh, wrong, but I think he is trying to ask, you know, if there is a product which is uh, there exists a product, and is there any approach through which we can understand the let's say some kind of persona which will use our product in the future? Is that what you want to ask, Pius? Because I think from his question, he understands that he needs to build persona first and then build the product. I can think of is let's say uh, so uh, YouTube Kids, you know, was launched much after YouTube, right? So yeah. I think so. The idea behind it would be uh, that there will be multiple quantitative data uh, to YouTube as well. That you know, kids have started using YouTube, or because when they would have built YouTube, they would have not kept kids in mind. I'm, uh, according to me, I think they would have kept somebody who is uh, an adult uh, or who can own a mobile internet access. Uh, but lately, they would have figured it out that you know a lot of kids have been using uh, uh, you know YouTube and it's an open source platform, so uh, they might want to restrict, and that is why they would have built YouTube Kids. So I think. Uh, if you know a future persona is being get, uh, is getting ready you will get some sense of it from uh, both uh, you know qualitative as well as quantitative data uh, not sure if your question is answered but i think uh, you, you will get some kind of uh, you know quantitative data as well so just to add to what abhishek said basically there are two two ways you can spot this one if you already have a product uh, if you already have a product, you can one identify what's happening within your product. For example, people are searching. One very common example: people are searching for some X item uh, in an e-commerce site. People are searching for an X item, but your search results are always zero. But those the search volume is very high for that particular product. What will you do is you'll inform the sales team or the or the integration or partnership team and make sure that the product is available from now on, right? Uh, so, so that so the same the same theory applies for uh, other things as well. That people are looking for certain activity or something, but they're not able to do it on your product. That's one approach. That is kind of within the product itself. The second is where uh, you are looking outside of your product for inspiration or for necessity. So, for example, your product has uh, is you already have a product create, but your product was created like five years back. And after that, not much has been upgraded, but your competition has come up and they're doing amazing stuff. In which case, and plus the demographic which used to use your product has also moved on. They have grown up and they're not using the product anymore or they are, their requirements have changed, their behavior has changed, right? And the new audience which falls in the same age, uh, they have completed be different behavior. In which case, again, you need to start figuring out key what's the right persona to build upon and or you know start tweaking the product from there on out so competition can make uh, can force you or the age uh, life cycle cuz product life cycle itself can catch up with you and you need to change for that for, because of external factors that also happens okay uh, if people not even 
uh, when you are so there's something called Piyush, there's something called uh, product life cycle. Uh, just look it up. Uh, so there are multiple stages in a product, and uh, as you can imagine, right, different different products. Uh, uh, so they go through a life cycle, right? So in the beginning, very few people will be even experimenting with the product, right? They are innovators. Uh, going on to slightly bigger usage, then the product becoming mass market. And after mass market, the product starts declining a little bit. Uh, and which is when you either decide to either uh, do something about it or uh, uh, kill it, let it die gracefully while you replace it with a new, better product. A very co very simple example, like for example, uh, let's talk about a car, right? Honda City, for example. Honda City has been around since 20 years now, and there has been I don't know how many variants, but quite a lot of major upgrades, right? A lot of major upgrades, uh, sorry, some major upgrades and uh, a lot of minor upgrades. So whenever they see that okay, the 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 shift is happening, the consumers are expecting better cars, they're expecting more features, they want touchscreen now, they want X Y Z now, they want sunroof now. And uh, because either because the customers are showing their interest or because the competition is also launching it or whatever be the reason, right? So the, all of this becomes signals for you to take action that yeah, now it's time to actually catch up. Now is the time to actually catch up, right? So typically it is represented by the decline in sales or by uh, uh, a decline in the NPS because people are not liking it. Plus a lot of times these car companies, to give an example, the car companies would also take a lot of feedback from, the, from their... Uh, uh, sales or dealerships, which give a uh, idea that people are expecting this, people are expecting that, and then you know, they work upon it. Uh, if people not even know how to buy a cryptocurrency and someone wants to make a product on blockchain, then how should they proceed in designing that product? What parameters should be used? It's a very broad question, Shubham. Very, very broad question, but let me try to address it. Um, so when people do not know, I mean, how to buy a cryptocurrency, I mean, the principles remain the same. If, if you do not know, the larger audience do not know how to do something. Uh, the simple, simplest thing is, one, you have to address their apprehensions. Why are they not, I mean, if they do not know, uh, first of all, not everybody would be interested in learning it. Secondly, uh, those who are interested in learning it, they will have a lot of apprehensions, right? So uh and number three the people who are interested in maybe they, they just do not have the access to or good quality content or good credible content which they can rely upon for the uh, for learning it so you need to make it you need to make good quality content you need to make it very accessible uh this is pretty much a starting point for uh, for that uh and because People do not know, and they are a little scared because it's also money-oriented, like this crypto thing, along with the buzz that is out there. Uh, in your in your product, it should there should be a lot of progressive disclosure. Okay, you need to make sure that our people you are informing. There's a lot of content available within the app, which explains, and the plus the entire site should be very simple, very very simply designed, so that people are already a little stressed about uh, about the entire concept, about, about the entire thing, a little bit concerned about how much they know about it and so on uh, so if you simplify the design make it dead simple make it very easy to easy on eyes uh, it will relax the people at least in terms of using the product okay and couple this with a lot of content at the right spots or a lot of guides at the right spots and you are pretty sorted at least you can begin from that I hope that answers. Okay, I think uh, let's, we can call it a day. And guys, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I hope everybody has uh, Piyush contact, uh, contact of Piyush. I am also very easily accessible. My uh, email ID is talvinder at pragmaticleaders.io. Uh, you can reach out to Abhishek as well. I hope Abhishek will not mind. Uh, and uh, I don't get bothered, just because sometimes the answers might be delayed, but I'll definitely answer that. That's a promise. And I was just going to say thank you so much, Abhishek, for the for the session. At the thanks for having me, Talvinder. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys for coming and joining us.